Well, it's uh, also an uh, you know important season and a busy season for earnings season uh, for uh, for conference season and. Uh, the IFL institutional equity teams, they kickstart their mega and annual institutional conference today. NET now has partnered with IFL to exclusively provide the media coverage and to talk about the conference theme, ideas, what are the big ideas uh, team IFL is showcasing. I have uh, Nirmal Jain, chairman of IFL Group. Nirmal, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's good to see that uh, 8.30, you're on the channel and that to live. <laughs> yeah. Good morning there. And so, good morning to all your viewers. So, what is the messaging this time, Nirmal? Uh, you know, this conference is coming at a time when everybody is looking for answers. Uh, yeah, I think that is the scenario in the equity market always. So, I think, uh, Nikun, you would not recollect a day when you had all the answers uh, in the morning. But I have lots of and, questions uh, for you, Nirmal. As, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, what is, you know, at a time there are lots of conferences which are happening back to back parallelly to each other. How are you proposing that your conference will be different and what is that mega <coughs> idea or show called, you know, showstopper at the IFL conference? Uh, so our conferences have been a little different every year. So this is the seventh uh, consecutive year. Uh, that we are holding our uh, Global Investor Conference here in Mumbai. Uh, I think the, the response itself is very overwhelming because more than 107 companies uh, with market cap at uh, current market prices of uh, more than $700 billion and uh, almost 600, 700 fund managers from all over the world are participating in this. Uh, we have a good lineup of speakers uh, as you would have seen the schedule uh, starting with Jim Walker uh, and then we have Mr. Nandan Nilekani in the afternoon. So the theme this time is the digital disruption and uh, I think regardless of what is happening politically or globally in the global economy, uh, the digital disruption is uh, for sure making lots of changes and uh, we'll see uh, the next 5 to 10 years uh, there will be a lot of uh, you know, new enterprises emerging and the existing enterprises or existing businesses that are there, uh, they will completely change in their form, shape and uh, way they do business. Nirmal, what's the view then on the market? And are you geared up to answer all those questions as you meet your clients today? Uh, yeah. What's going on? I mean, besides the bit of a short covering led bout that we saw on Monday, we're back to square one pretty much. Yeah, I, I, in fact, in your uh, ET, my interviews also carried this morning. So this is a time to buy good stocks or at least not sell in panic. Uh, because, uh, okay. Uh, there have been few short-term factors, you know, say public sector, PSU banks, results, you know, and that converge with uh, global panic. Uh, so because that led to market fall and markets uh, are always volatile. I mean, equity markets have always been volatile. Uh, but you don't invest in stock markets or equity markets, you know, with a perspective of one month or two months. But if you have a three to five year perspective, then India's story is still as good. I don't think that anybody who will, who's contradicting or who is, you know, not agreeing with the fact uh, that India is the fastest growing eco economy in the world. Uh, India probably is one of the biggest beneficiaries amongst the large economies uh, because of the lower crude prices and falling commodity prices. Uh, and also, people may say that things are moving slowly politically or on reforms, but nobody is saying that uh, they are moving in the wrong direction. Uh, so it's a matter of time. And corporate earnings have been disappointing. We all understand that. But the fact of the matter is uh, they have to bottom out because, you know, Corporate earnings, even if nothing happens politically, nothing happens in the economy, your corporate earnings can't keep falling. So at some point in time, they bottom out and they start looking up. And we'll remember how 2001, 2002 also, similar kind of thing had happened. And then, so there were two, three years when all the analyst uh, uh, you know, forecasts were being downgraded. And then there was a time when they were upgraded in a very significant way. So I think uh, maybe one or two quarters we'll see uh, this pain continuing and then corporate earnings will start looking up. A uh, lot of clean, cleansing of balances, a lot of other things have happened. Uh, so I'm not so bearish. I think, uh, you know, market may fall by another 5-7% in case there's some event or some jitters, uh, you know, uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, of course, FIs have been selling, but we have seen that at least last year, uh, there have been good local flows. Uh, uh, so on the whole, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, we have seen a correction, a good healthy correction, and uh, valuations are now attractive. 
Uh, so just wait for a uh, appropriate time. And budget, I think, would be a key trigger. Uh, you know, let's see what comes in budget. But I think that is what most investors are looking forward to. Okay. Just before I come to that theme uh, of the conference, Nirmal, it's very interesting as well. Just wondering this whole talk of long term being coming coming in in the budget as well. You know, while the market now seems to be at least knowing that okay, something like that could happen. If indeed it does come about, do you think there will be an immediate knee jerk reaction if that does come about? Uh, there can be, a, yeah, there will be a reaction. I think because market is very fragile. I mean, this is a time when most of the investors' confidence is little <coughs> weak. You know, because they have seen a huge erosion in values. So at this point in time, they are not ready for another shock. You know, one important message which must be, you know, government must uh, must be delivered to the government. And they must take note of that, you know, when this long term capital gain tax was made so benign and so easy, it was also that the STT was introduced, which is, uh, you know, first time in the history of the stock market. You know what happens that when you have a, you know, you can't collect taxes from five different ways and think that, uh, you know, people won't know and people think that the taxes are low. So if the long term capital gain tax has to be uh, diluted in whichever way or capital gain tax for that matter, I think STT should be removed. So we should have a simpler tax regime. Today, what is happening, if I ask you or if I ask anybody, nobody knows the precise effective tax rate, which will be in four decimals. Or, uh, you know, so there are a number of sales, charges, all those things have to be removed. Uh, and if we have a long-term capital gain tax, I think market will accept it. Remove STT in lieu of that. So when STT was introduced, because there was no long-term capital gain tax, you can't, like, have both the taxes. So I think that is very important. If government does that, uh, then, you know, market will uh, appreciate. Because if you remove STT, Liquidity will improve in the market and you tax the profits, you know, that has been the traditional way of taxing. So on one hand, people say that STT is very easy to collect tax. So you can't have an easy to collect tax as well as difficult to collect tax both. Okay, Nirmal, now final question from my end at least, maybe you have one more, but the theme of the conference pretty much sums up the mood currently, right? Technology is a big right. disruptor and therefore... While a lot of stocks have come off and there is a buffet out there for investors, companies with strong technological excellence could well stand out going ahead. So in light of that, from amongst everything that has gone down, what is IFL as a house recommending by virtue of this conference? No, so we, we, we are recommending that Investors now have to look at the digital digitization and technology dimension of all the businesses. So it's not something that there are some startups that are technology startups, uh, uh, you know, and probably you take a call on the new e-commerce companies like Flipkart or Ola or Uber. But even the, uh, you know, established businesses which have been there for, say, you know, 50 years, 100 years also, one has to look at it, how they are adapting to the new environment and how they are protecting their uh, franchise uh, you know, in, in, in the light of huge disruptions happening because of the mobile, internet, cloud, all these technologies combined with, you know, EKYC, Aadhaar, uh, and lots of other things that are happening. Uh, so it'll be, I think, this aspect will become an important uh, you know, aspect for investors because among the established players also, there'll be some that will take a, a lead in technology and we believe that they probably will, uh, you know, gain significant uh, uh, edge over their competitors uh, in next few years and banking is also an interesting industry because all the banks are trying to digitize and trying to take uh, advantage of this opportunity fastest but uh, but the strategies are different and who does it the smartest only time will tell but investors will bet uh, their money keeping this in mind so this will become a big uh, parameter to evaluate all the companies uh, going forward. Okay, Nirmal, let you go on that note and enjoy your conference. We will speak again with you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. That's the view coming in from Nirmal Jain from the sidelines of the IFL conference, which kickstarts in uh, Mumbai today. In minutes from now, we will also be chatting with Heman Tukral as well as Deepak Shinoy. But it's